stated in the constitution. Within every year, we have three meetings. And a meeting is constituted by the day of the first sitting until you adjourn the sitting. Finally, and usually we say again, sine die. That is a meeting. And so, what you do is either to adjourn a sitting or adjourn the house. You cannot adjourn one meeting to the other meeting. Okay? You can prolong a meeting by continuously sitting and not adjourning. But when you finish the first meeting, which is usually between January and end of March, you can't say you are adjourning that meeting because it has ended. The second meeting starts usually from around end of May or June to end of July or early August. Then we go for a long vac. It has also ended. Then you go to the third meeting, which usually starts around end of September or early October till Christmas period. And it also ends there. So you don't adjourn a meeting. You adjourn a sitting or a house. And so I think my colleague, the majority leader, has got it wrong. But he's drawing my attention to a provision in the Kenyan's standing orders and that of UK. And I said, I've not come across any. And I'm going to look for it. But if it ever happened, maybe their constitutional architecture allows it, not ours. You see, because he rightly stated that when the minority leader used the word prorogue, okay, it was the wrong term he used. Yes, because in Ghana, we don't prorogue parliament, okay, because it, it starts and ends constitutionally, it's by law, so you don't prorogue it. Proroguing it is to dissolve it by usually uh, an act of a queen or a president, depending on the country, and we don't have that yet. See, but this one, they are getting it wrong. So, so, so even today, what has happened is also irregular. Mm -hmm. What has happened today is irregular. Because we approved a budget for the government of the day. Now, there's an unforeseen event or activity or a pandemic. And therefore, provision was not made for that. So, government now wants us to make provision. Now, looking at the finances available, they think that it's important they make use of one fund that we usually don't touch, which is what? Contingency fund. And so, government has to come back for us to take another decision. The only way you take decisions in the house is by motion. Where you move and allow people to talk, to debate, was want to tap the collective wisdom of the country to take the decision. When you come and make a statement, you can members can only comment on the statement. You don't debate the statement, even whether it's from a minister or from a member. You comment on it. You don't debate the statement. And so that is the standard orders we go by. So we'll just so inform the standing orders you are working on so that at least it finds place in the new standing order. Which one? You see, um, this disagreement uh, we are having and the education you are given, will this inform the work will be on the standing orders? I heard my colleague the majority leader saying that they are trying to make provisions in the standing orders so that parliament will adjourn a meeting. But as I have explained to you, it's not possible for the meeting to be adjourned. It ends. It's a calendar that is accepted by the House at the beginning of each year that we will have three meetings. The first meeting will start from January and maybe end at the end of March. And the second will start from the end of May or early June and ends at July or early August. That is accepted. So if you are getting to the end of a meeting and you still have business, it's the sittings that you adjourn to the next day or the next week. But you don't adjourn the meeting because the meeting ends. The 
you cannot adjourn it to another meeting. Mm. No, it has it can work. But you have come under a barrage of attack for you, quote unquote, not respecting the speaker by standing up for him on Saturday when he was in cess, when he suspended the house. What is your justification for it? No, no, no. If you realize when the speaker suspended the house, I stood up. And when I saw that they were lifting the, taking the maze away, then I saw that it was irregular. The maze is the authority of the house. When we are giving the respect to the speaker, we are giving it because the maze, the authority of the house, is entrusted in the speaker. And so when I sit as a speaker, I have the same authority. But when you now take that maze away irregularly, Illegal, wrongfully, I have no authority now to obey. And so I sat back. People do not understand this. It is very clear in the standard orders. Now, what is happening is now that parliament is continuously sitting. Even when we are in our constituencies, it means we are sitting. Because you all know when you are sitting and you say you are suspending the sitting, it means the sitting is still continuous. Okay? And so whether we are in the constituency or not, we are sitting. So from that day up to day, we are going back to the parliament says sitting. And therefore, by our standing orders, the maze should be at its proper place in the house. That is the floor of the house. So I was drawing their attention. And you saw I was visibly drawing their attention. Please don't remove the maze. And it was removed. Then I took it that maybe we are in abnormal times. So abnormal things are happening. <laughs> and we just have to accept. Because the Indians are looking for leadership to be united to lead the country to fight this pandemic which is what we are all working for so i was telling the majority leader that what they have to do is to create a forum of the leaders so that before the business brought to the house they iron out the procedure together they agree and they inform members before we start your, your, we, your, your, minority, minority, your minority has described the speaker as a walking illegal. Do you share in that same way? Well, 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 go and ask my minority. Don't ask me. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Yeah.